Welcome back to another video you guys. Today I'm going to be showing you something I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm going to be doing a, a clear version of the Apple Watch. I've always wondered what it would look like if I could replace the aluminum frame that the Apple Watch has with a, a, a see-through or clear, clear version and how I might accomplish that as well as removing the, uh, the paint from the border of the glass to also get a clear screen. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Uh, let's get started. The first thing I'll need to do is isolate that frame. Like magic, I've disassembled the whole thing. And uh, remove the glass. All right, I've taken a molding of the crown here. You can see how flexible this mold material is. And I'm gonna show you how I pour that. Carefully take uh, some of the, uh, the liquid epoxy. We'll fill that up and center the, uh, the screw in there. I'm gonna do the same thing with the uh, power button. It's a bit of a, uh, nooks and crannies on this, so I'm going to take uh, my tweezers and gently uh, push the epoxy into all, the, all of those spaces to eliminate any air bubbles that I can uh, gonna get. I've tried this a few times and uh, I've had issues each time. It's a lot of trial and error seeing as I've never done this before. Now that they've set up, we can remove them from the mold. Look how beautiful that is. Seeing how this is so small, it's slightly delicate and flexible still. The uh, epoxy does take a few days to fully set up, um, but I think I'll be able to work with that. Here's another side-by-side -side comparison of the old crown. I removed the screw from it. And then here's the uh, the power button side by side. Uh, my first attempt at uh, molding the uh, the frame didn't quite work out so well. I uh, used a, a brittle material, and it was a little tricky, and I didn't uh, it didn't work out all right. I got too many bubbles in it. My second attempt went a little bit better. Uh, no bubbles, but uh, the uh, uh, the molding material stuck to the to the material so it was kind of uh, hard to work out. The third one worked out great. Uh, it took a, a long process and I could make a full video like a full hour video on how to do that. But let me just show you uh, how, uh, how it looked when I uh, was finished with it removing it from the uh, the mold. Now this process was fairly tricky. It took multiple steps of uh, using the um, uh, mold material to fill in all the different cracks and crevices and of the uh, of the watch uh, to do this without getting any bubbles uh, the material that, uh, that I'm using here is still slightly flexible but I don't want to stretch it so I'm gonna have to be extra careful when uh, removing it from the mold and you'll see some uh, little uh, uh, basically sticks of glass coming off of that. Those are where I inserted the uh, the epoxy so that I could get it to flow evenly through the entire mold without any bubbles and without an, uh, any issue. Fairly tricky if you uh, want to. Uh, if I get enough people commenting asking for a video on how to do that, I'll do that. But it was very time consuming and it took me, uh, I'd say probably over a week to get it right. And so uh, with multiple attempts, obviously. Uh, removing it from the mold is tricky as well, and it also destroys the mold, this particular mold, which means I can't reuse it. Um, but that's okay. I, I don't really plan on doing this again, um, unless I get enough people wanting me to, to do a different material, maybe one filled with glitter or something uh, unique. But uh, anyway, um, removing this... Uh, mold from the frame was uh, it probably took me about I'd say 20 minutes or so um, but, and figuring out all of the things that I had to do was fairly tricky 
uh, to get uh, to get the mold to to be um, identical to the uh, actual uh, uh, housing of the Apple Watch. But with enough patience and uh, precision with the razor blade, I am able to remove it from the uh, remove the mold from the the, the now uh, clear frame. Now, if you think this concept is pretty cool, feel free to smash that like button. Help me uh, share this uh, video with, with others. I'd like this video to, to go viral if possible. Put a lot of time and energy into this, uh, to this video. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it so far. I will say it's very satisfying to remove the uh, the molding material to see it peel away from the uh, the nooks and crannies and leave a perfect uh, replica of the original aluminum frame. Almost there, and there we go. A little bit of cleanup work to do, a little bit of flashing, but that's to be expected with a mold like this. Let's compare it side by side with the original mold, or the original frame. It's interesting to see what you can't see by looking at the aluminum frame, which is what's on the other side. Because it's clear, it, it shows what's on the inside as well on the outside. But you can see how precise the uh, the, the uh, frame ended up being, perfectly matching the uh, the aluminum frame. And, uh, here's a look at how uh, clear this can go just by submerging it in water. You'll be able to see uh, how uh, glass-like the, the frame can actually be. Let's also just check, I want to see if the bands slide in as well. Looks like that one slides in perfectly. There we go. Next, let's remove the paint. Go ahead and clean up the display and get that glass adhered. Make sure there's no dust or debris that we're going to be sandwiching between the display. We'll clean off our fingerprints, oil, dust, mirror smudges, anything on the glass. I do this with a combination between isopropyl alcohol and acetone. The isopropyl alcohol will uh, remove any of the oils from my fingers and the acetone will uh, basically polish everything up nice and clean. Most of the time the acetone is all that's needed but sometimes uh, the uh, uh, acetone will cut through the oils from your from your fingers. So uh, alcohol will so that's why I use those two in, in uh, combination there. 
rid of the last speck of dust on the screen and we're going to add some loca loca is uh what stands for liquid optical clear adhesive it's the adhesive that i prefer to use to uh, adhere my glass to the displays because it allows me to center the displays perfectly with the glass as well as I uh, get a clean finish without any bubbles or any issues. Now I've tried using in the you know because I, I refurbish iPhone screens I do use the OCA the optical clear adhesive on those displays but uh, the uh, machines that are needed uh, don't uh, leave a good finish on an Apple watch. So, uh, and you can't really, and you only have one shot to center the Apple Watch screen and the glass. So it's uh, much more uh, efficient, efficient and effective for me to use the Loca on these displays so that I can center them perfectly uh, every time because it has enough play time between uh, uh, getting the Loca to spread to, to the, all the corners and using a view, UV light to solidify it that I'm uh, able to center it perfectly. Before uh, before it firms up entirely. As you can see, it's spreading to the edges. And uh, now that it's spread to the edges entirely, we'll center it. And once it's centered, which it is now, we'll go ahead and place it under our UV light to cure on both sides. Luckily, with a clear glass, we don't even have to worry about it. It's going to cure wherever the loca is. And while that basically bakes in there, we'll go ahead and start assembling the uh, rest of the watch. So the first thing that I'm going to do is add some uh, glue to the back of the frame where we're going to apply our uh, the external charging and heart rate monitor um, on the, uh, the back there. Making sure our orientation is correct for the internals. Once that's cured, we can move to inserting the uh, logic board. There's one connector, a Lego style connector down at the bottom. Get the distinct click. Let me know that it's in. And then using the brackets, we'll be able to uh, secure the uh, logic board to the uh, external charging unit. This will also cinch down that uh, that unit on the back and uh, ensure that its rubber gasket that goes around it is uh, basically uh, flush with the uh, cutout on the back side of the, the frame. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is put the power button back inside. We're going to add the flex cable. Uh, inside the flex cable there, there's a bracket with two, uh, uh, two screws that are going to be able to grab onto that power button and cinch it down and hold it in place. We'll also have that microphone there on the left of that cable, which will push in to the frame and make sure that it lines up with the hole uh, that was uh, left there from the mold that'll allow the microphone to still work. Once we've gotten those screws back in, we'll put uh, in the uh, speaker unit here. Click that down. And then we're going to install the uh, uh, the interior part of, for the crown. Once we've connected that connector, gotten all those connectors nice and seated well, we'll go ahead and uh, screw on the uh, the cap that cinches the crown unit down so that we can screw on the actual crown dial to the exterior of the watch. Now I've made a special tool out of a razor blade that allows me, it's a basically like a little wrench that clamps onto the, the nut in there that allows me to spin uh, the, uh, the crown and get it to the right distance so that it clicks. We'll go ahead and take our screws and screw in uh, the rest of the components. Like the bracket here that holds the microphone in place. Now the nice thing about this material, seeing as it's still supple, I'm actually able to force the screws into it by simply poking a small hole 
uh, first and then the screws will actually thread themselves as they screw into the material to get a nice grip and seeing as this material does take a couple days to fully cure it'll solidify and keep the screws in nice and tight we'll add the Taptic engine here aligning all of the connectors and putting the screws in to hold it down I also noticed that I put the bracket on wrong for the power button so we'll go ahead and quickly fix that there we go put the sticker back over top of it and now we need to install the force touch now I could install a new one but I decided to show you guys how to reuse them if you've successfully removed them I'm going to take a fine bead of the E8000 that I prefer to use and put it all the way around then we'll insert the uh, the force touch sensor, line it up perfectly with the frame, and then the way that I clamp this to get a flat surface is take a piece of glass and I clamp it on there and leave that to cure. Once it's cured I can remove the glass and then now we can go ahead and screw down uh, those two screws that hold the uh, the sticker um, cable that goes uh, that grounds basically those flex cables. Now I realize that this material isn't a grounding material but uh, the watch will still work just fine. We'll go ahead and insert the battery, the connector there, and then after fighting with the bracket and the sticker, we should be able to uh, screw down that bracket to hold the battery connector and the uh, speaker connector in place. And then we can insert the battery, and all we need to do now is get the screen on there. So now that the screen is fully cured, I'm going to take each one of those connectors and gently slide them into their connector and make sure they're pushed in properly without damaging any of the cables or connectors. Once those connectors are in, I'll go and flick, uh, click down all the flaps and we'll put the stickers back that we have uh, tried to save throughout the process. Go ahead and try to turn the watch on. It looks like it's dead, so it needs to charge. Now that it's charging, we can see that we've connected the charging uh, assembly correctly. And I trust that the watch is going to work, so I'm just going to simply move on to the next step, which is adhering the screen. I'm fairly confident in the, my repair here, so I'll, uh, I'll test it after it's fully, fully uh, adhered. I do fix dozens of these each day for customers, so I'm fairly confident. And there we go. If you like what you see, smash that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. This video took quite a bit of uh, uh, time, effort, money to, to make. You get all the materials to, to mold it and all the time that it took. Alright. One of the things I also like to test is just basically the main functions of the watch. So let's go ahead and see if that, clown, that crown clicks there. It does. Also, when we spin it, does it zoom in and out? does looks good successful I really enjoyed making this video turned out beautiful thanks for watching the video you guys if you liked it feel free to smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm and uh, hopefully I can come out with some videos like this in the future. If you guys have any ideas, feel free to leave them in the comments below and let me know what you thought of the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you around.